For years, we were told that it was just a pipe dream, something that would be impossible with CSS. But it turns out that not only is it possible, it's capable of much more than we could have possibly imagined. Hello, my front end friends. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel, I hope you fall madly deeply in love with CSS. And if you didn't guess from the title or thumbnail, we are talking about the has pseudo class today. A lot of people are calling this the parent selector. I understand why they're doing it, but it's actually capable of a lot more than just being a simple parent selector. We'll get to all of those possibilities in a second, but let's start off with the very basics of how it works first and work our way up to some of the really cool stuff that we can do with it. So to start with, we just have this simple section here. It's set up with a grid just so we can see everything on the screen at once. And in here we have a bunch of divs. Some of these divs, or one of them, has a heading in it. All, most of the other ones have paragraphs in there. We have an empty paragraph. We have a paragraph with a class on it. And we have a link in this one as well, just to sort of mix and match and have a few different things going on to play around with. And we'll use this to explore the basics of has before we move on to those better examples that I was talking about. And so let's start off with the very basics and just some basic styling here. But let's go and choose one of those divs. And so let's say div, and then we can just come in here and say has. And this is where the real magic starts. Let's zoom in, we'll make the code a little bit bigger here. And so we have our div has, and then we can put something in here. So I can say div has an h1, and I can give this its own styling. So I'm selecting the div based on what the contents of that div are. So it's a, in this case, a parent selector for any div that has an h1 in it. That's why people are calling it the parent selector. So let's throw a background color on there of hot pink just so we get a nice bright color on there. And you can see that div and only that div has switched over. And so let's try that again with a div has P and then we can select all of our paragraphs. So background color, and let's give this one a lime green background color just so we can change things up. And there we go. We have the lime green coming on those ones. Now this one happens to have an empty paragraph and well, we could also target that one. So we can say div has, and that's because we can do more advanced selectors inside of here as well. So we can say div has empty and that should work no problem. And let's give that a background of transparent to make it disappear. It doesn't really make sense or do anything valuable here. <laughs> Maybe we'll just say uh, fire brick. So we have a color on there and we can actually see it, but just to say we can select things in different ways. Uh, of course, we could also say we have my fancy paragraph right here. So we could target that. So you don't just have to target elements. You can also target classes. So div has dot fancy paragraph. And just like we've been doing up until now, you just use your regular selectors inside of the has like you normally would. And let's say this one actually has a color of uh, Rebecca purple. It's a fancy one and it has changed really hard to read that. So let's also change the background on that one to white because it's a fancy paragraph. Um, and we can also just for fun say div has and in this case we can also say if it has a link in it we're going to explore this a little bit uh, and use this one to explore things a little bit more because here let's say if there's a link in it maybe the background will become a steel blue and so this one is changed to have the blue background because there is a link but that link is actually nested inside of the paragraph uh, right here. So we have a div has a paragraph and then we have the link that's inside that paragraph. And in this case, we're saying div that has a link and it doesn't have to be a direct child. As long as that link is inside of the div somewhere, it's going to work. But if you do want to get more advanced, you can use combinators in here. And so I can say that if the div has a direct child that is a link that we style it that way. And in this case, you can see that it's not working. But we could fix that or give another example of here where we have this empty div. Maybe instead of the empty div, we just throw a link in there and we'll make it go nowhere. And actually that's enough to change it even though there's no actual text in there yet. But there is a A that is inside that div. So that one has changed over. Uh, whereas this one hasn't because I'm only selecting it if it has a direct child that is a part or that is a link. Now, this is really cool. I think it shows you a little bit of how the syntax works and a little bit maybe your mind is already flowing with some really cool ideas on stuff you can do. But this is a really useless example. And just before we keep going to the next thing, which is where things start getting a little bit more practical, I do want to comment on browser support because I know there's probably people that have already commented about it down below. It is currently supported in Chrome and in Safari and it is behind a flag in Firefox so it will only be a matter of time before it's in Firefox as well. Support is going to quickly grow from here 
I think it's safe to play around with it, use it in personal projects, do some cool stuff to make sure you understand everything it's capable of because we're going to be able to start using this before you know it. So let's jump to something that's a little bit more practical, maybe, <laughs> um, with let's say we have these card classes and often when we have cards and, and stuff like this, you end up like you have a regular card and then maybe you have a card that has an image and then a card that has an icon. And often what that means is you have some general, gen and often what that means is we have some general styling. So you have your card and then you style your card and your card content and all the stuff you need. But then you get something like this where you actually want to style it differently. And often that would be like you'd have your card and then like with media and have some sort of modifier class um, that would change the behavior of it. And you'd write new CSS based on the second class being here with has we can be much more like follow certain design patterns depending on the content rather than having to also add extra classes to modify things, which is super, super awesome. So now we could just come here and say dot card has, and my image in this case has a class of media on it. So we can say dot media. So this could be a video or it could be other things. You could style it depending on what is in there. It could be just an image tag as well. Uh, whatever selector you want to be there. And then we could throw a display grid or display flex on there and I'll just set this up fast. And then, so this card is now styled differently and we get two columns coming in there because if my card has a media like that, it splits up into two. And so that's already kind of useful, but everything we've looked at so far is looking at how this is a, a parent selector. So my card has media. So I'm selecting the parent based on this child but we can actually do a little bit more than that. And this is where things can get interesting and say this one with the icon, because right now I have this card content that has padding one on it because I want to be able to have like my image that actually touches the borders, but I don't want my icon to touch the borders, do I? And you know, I could just come in and select my, my icon and add some padding to that or something. But what we could do is we just as an alternative <laughs> has dot icon. And we could actually say that this has padding of one rem and that's obviously going to add the padding all the way around but now we have double padding here we don't really want that do we we, we want to make sure it's the same all the way around ha huh? well that's where things get a little bit more interesting and so we could say card has icon well the if it has a card content class because that's what i've i've put my things here we have my card my icon and then i have this div here and i don't want this div to have any padding on it anymore so if the card has an icon, the card content will actually get a padding of zero. And then I remove the padding from this. So I'm using this here, the card has icon to select the parent, the card, and then I'm going back in and selecting the content based on that. So I can change a sibling based on if another sibling is present or not. And there was other combinators you could use for this. We had the plus one, which is the adjacent sibling, or there was the tilde that you could use as well. Uh, but that would also depend on which one was first. And that always was kind of annoying because let's say you had a footer and you wanted to change it based on the footer. Well, you couldn't choose things that came before it. And we can do that now as well. So let's go take a look at an example where we can do that, uh, which is here where our, let's say we have these articles and let's pretend they're separate pages. I have H1s on both of these. So we have two separate articles on two different pages. Um, but we have this pattern where you have a title and a subtitle, but sometimes you have a subtitle and sometimes maybe you don't have a subtitle or you might have like a time element or something. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You have something that sometimes follows a heading and sometimes doesn't. And you want the space here after this one to always be consistent. We can do that really nice and easily. So let's just say we come here on my article title and or the, yeah, we'll say the article title. We'll start with that one. And you say you want a margin. I'm going to use the logical property margin block end and margin block end. Let's just make it five rem. So it's really big so we can see it. And so it's really interesting here. Let's start with saying we have this article title and let's just say we have a margin block end, which is a logical property for margin bottom. I'm going to make it huge just to highlight that we have a really big space there and we have a really big space here. The only problem is I don't want this really big space right here. I only want to add this margin block end if we don't have a subtitle following it. And we can actually do that with a selector. And you might think that you'd want to start with the article because this is a parent selector, but you don't have to start with your parent. Uh, you can actually start with the article title and you can say article title has, and you might be saying, well, Kevin, it doesn't 
have anything inside of it and it's a parent selector. But remember, it's not a parent selector. It is a lot more than that. And we can do different combinators in here. So I can say if it has an adjacent sibling of article subtitle, subtitle. And so the plus here means if an article subtitle is directly after it. So in this case, we could say that it has a, let's just say color of lime. So the color actually changes on it. And you can see the one at the top there has changed over. And in that case, the article subtitle can have the margin. So we'll do a margin block end here of five rem. So it gets that really big space that can come in. And I, I still want that space here. So we can use a, another way of doing this where we have our article title ha uh, not has. And the not has, I always find a little bit awkward uh, rather than being has not. But uh, we'll, we can do that. And then let's just change the color to pink so we can actually see uh, that it's changing over. So this one should change. Perfect. And then this one can hit the margin block end of 5 rem. And so the first one is getting this style. And the second one is getting this style because it not has an article subtitle. It would be nice if this was has not, but we have to do not has. Um, just think of it as doesn't, right? This is the, the doesn't selector basically right there. So yeah, I think that's really cool that we can select based on adjacent sibling. We used to be able to, like I could always do, I could choose this if it's in follow, if it was following something, right? So you could always do this, this plus adjacent sibling before, but it would be to select the subtitle and not what came before it. And that was something that we've looked at and been wanting for a long time. So not only did we get our parent selector, but we also got the preceding sibling selector basically with this, but you can even do a little bit more than what we're doing here. And you can get really creative with how this actually works by, well, let's look at the next example to see how. So here I have this very simple image gallery. I haven't done anything too fancy here at all. Basically I had to set up a grid. So we have all of them. And so let's start it off. We're gonna say image gallery has image. And let's start there. We're gonna, we're gonna step things up. We're gonna walk our way through this one because it, it's kind of weird how it works, but it, it's really cool. Uh, so let's just say that it gets a border of three pixels, solid lime green. So we have images in there, so that border shows up. Now, let's make this a little more interesting. Let's say image hover. So now that border should disappear, but if I hover on top of any image in there, now it's showing up. So only based on whether I'm hovering or not, the parent is getting a border. Wouldn't normally do this, but just to show how this is working. Now let's take this one step further and say, when it's hovering, my any image that's inside there will get the border instead. Now all of them get that border on them when we hover. Interesting. Now what if I want to do that, but on all the ones that aren't being hovered? Ha, huh. well, we could do that by saying not hover here. So I'm selecting, if I hover on an image, we're going to select every image that is not being hovered on. And now you can see the border disappears wherever I'm hovering. You might say, Kevin, this is really weird. Why would you want to do that? Uh, it's true. Why would you want to do that? Uh, if, I wouldn't want to do this, but just to show you that you could do something like that, but we could do something a little bit more interesting here. Whereas maybe what we do is actually scale things down. And so I could say scale 0.8 and maybe we could even do it like an opacity of 0.7 or something like that. So if I hover on any of them, we're highlighting the one that's being hovered on. Now we get a little glitch and weird stuff because it's possible to fall between them. So let's just come up on all these images, add a little transition. We'll transition the scale over 350 uh, milliseconds and we'll do an ease. And then we'll also scale the opacity 350, 350 and do linear on that one. So we have both of them doing having a transition on them. And then we get this type of thing where we can sort of go between them, do that type of thing. And if we go off, they all just come back to life. We can sort of focus on the one that we want. And for me, that's kind of mind blowing and a little bit amazing and really cool. And while has is landing in browsers now and is starting to gain support, there's a lot of future CSS stuff now, things like custom media queries and nesting that aren't actually supported by any browsers today, but we can actually use completely safely within our own code bases. If you'd like to see how to do that, there is a video right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I'd like to say a very big thank you to my enablers of awesome, Jan, Johnny, Mr. Dave, Patrick, Simon, Steven, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their continuous support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your core on the internet just a little bit more awesome.